Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. In this tutorial, we will talk about pulsed amplifier simulation and data analysis. Before we start, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notifications. And after you watch the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues who may be interested in watching similar tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and understand how can you do pulsed amplifier simulation and corresponding data analysis. The workspace I have here can be downloaded from the Knowledge Center, and the link is provided in the description box below this video. So here we do have a test amplifier, which is a very simple amplifier to explain the concept. It's based on an FET device from NEC, and it's available in ADS library if you want to use it. Now, the first simulation is here uh, as a pretty usual harmonic balance one-tone simulation, and I believe you already have watched my earlier videos on harmonic balance simulation, and now you're very comfortable uh, simulating any of your you know, circuits with harmonic balance. Now, after you perform harmonic balance, whether it's a single point simulation or whether you do uh, input power sweep uh, to characterize the complete amplifier performance, you can observe graphs that, uh, you know, for various figure of merits, and it's pretty straightforward thing to do. Now, in many applications such as radar and other, you know, pulsed communication, it's uh, necessary that we also perform the pulsed analysis. Now, to do so, we can either use envelope simulator in ADS or we can use transient simulator. Envelope is far more efficient in doing these kind of analysis. And in the last tutorial video, I already covered the fundamentals of envelope simulation. Now, on this disk bench, as you can see, I do have an input sine wave source. Um, and in series, we have connected a 50 ohm, which is the characteristic impedance of this circuit. Now, in the VT sine wave source, and that these kind of sources are available from sources time domain library, and there are plenty of them you can pick and choose whatever you wish. So in this source here, we have applied a gate variable, and that gate variable is basically generating a pulse. And the expression available to use is exponential pull, exp underscore pulse, and it has a syntax which is shown here and you can type in your number as the pulse characteristics you want. Now, once you have that defined, we can set up envelope simulation using the technique I talked about in the last tutorial video for the desired number of harmonics you may want to capture. There are other type of pulse sources also available in ADS, and you can refer to ADS documentation to find out the syntax needed for those equations. Now, in this part, first particular case, you have the input which is pulsed, the DC for the gate as well as strain are constant DC. And then we will record the output input at these particular nodes. Now, once we go ahead and run this kind of analysis, it runs pretty quickly. And then you can observe the data display for various plots. This is the pulse shape, which we have used for our input signal to the amplifier. On these two plots, you can see the output fundamental and harmonic tones. The left graph shows you the magnitude, which is a linear uh, magnitude. And here we do have uh, a DPM um, you know, magnitude shown uh, for the corresponding you know, uh, signal powers. Now, at the same time, if you wish to do power added efficiency uh, kind of calculations, you can plot uh, the PAE versus time, and you can simply use some of these equations available uh, for, for you to characterize the amplifier only during the on cycle of the pulse, which is um, you know uh, pretty evident from the plot. So it's very, very simple you know, analysis to do by using a simple array logic here. The second kind of uh, pulsed analysis which you could do where not only your input signal is pulsed, but you can also do the pulsing on the bias supply because it doesn't make sense to have a constant DC bias if your input is getting pulsed. So on the input side, the setup is pretty similar to what we used earlier, but on the DC bias supply here, you can see we have applied a 10 nanosecond delay so that um, you know the signal comes through nicely with an amplifier before you decide to switch on uh, the DC supply. Or you can have your own logic the way you want. 
Also, the edge shape is different. In our case, we have used ARF, um, you know, error function uh, kind of pulse shape, and with certain rise time, fall time, and the width and the period uh, notation for the pulse. The rest of the stuff remains very simple and very similar to what we did earlier. And once we perform the simulation, again, you can see uh, the comparison between the DC uh, you know, bias pulse, which is shown in blue here, and the red, which is the input signal. And as you can see, once input signals arrive uh, near about the right number, you have the full DC supply available for your amplifier to work. And this way, it makes your job much easier uh, to perform the pulsed simulation, and then look at the corresponding measurements for your own circuit. So that's all for this short tutorial video. Hope it gives you some initial idea how to go about setting up pulse simulation. For more details, click on the Knowledge Center link. And if you're a supported Keysight customer, you would be able to download this example and then try it out on your own design. Thanks again I'll, you know, for watching this tutorial. Wish you happy designing.